We are Heather and Paul Christie. And for over 12 years, we've worked with executives and entrepreneurs to accelerate change in every aspect of their business. Because we are in the fastest paced business environment that anyone has ever seen before. So join us for the Evolve to Win Show. Hi, and welcome to another Evolve to Win Show with Heather and Paul. Great to have you with us today. Today we're talking about how to keep your company culture alive. And that is, of course, if you want your existing company culture to stay alive. Some of you may want to shift it, right? Um, quite often we see that some of the challenges that people are having in business are actually symptoms. But the symptom is not what you treat. If you want to treat the cause, you're going to actually fix it. And a lot of times the cause of challenges in business stems from uh, the wrong company culture. So when you think about your company culture, I want you to be thinking about uh, where you currently work or even thinking back to maybe another place where you worked. Um, Paul, share with me, what do you, what's your thoughts on how culture is created? So I've seen two different ways that cultures are created. Either the owner of the company or in corporate settings, this has already been set with mission statements and everything. It's been directed by from the top. Okay. Or... Alternatively, it is created by the employees. And so unless you create your own culture and head that up, it will be created for you. One way or another, you're going to have a culture in your business. And we all know what, what that means, right? Or we know what, how that feels. Or, you know, we've been a part of a company that has either a great culture or, you know, a culture that maybe isn't quite that awesome. Or not so much. So, yeah. yeah. So your two examples, I think, are another way to summarize that mm -hmm. is, you either have an intentional company culture, that's the one that's created and developed by the senior leadership team, or you have the unintentional company culture. This is where maybe it's been created and maybe you've got something really nice on the website, your value statement, you might even have it in your lobby, but it hasn't been consistently reinforced and so therefore it doesn't really exist. Right. It exists in, in, it's like company culture, right? right? Um, so be thinking right now about your culture. Is it exactly how you want it to be? Is it really, really uh, intentional and, and is it intact? And one of the things we know is um, the companies that are struggling right now with their culture are, are usually struggling because they haven't really taken the effort, the intentional effort to keep it alive. I want us to give so a couple of so examples. So it's defining it first and then it's keeping it alive, you know, because that's something that you just can't, it's, I kind of think about it as um, working out. So Working out is great. You start to feel good. But if you miss one day, a week, two weeks, it starts to Couple slip. Years. And then you start seeing yourself and you're like, boy, this thing, I'm not looking as good as I did before. So it, it will slip. So what I think you were going to say is something about the fact that you have to keep the culture alive. You have to work on it consistently. Constantly, so how do you do that? Constantly. So, okay, right. So first is making sure that it's defined and that it's what you want. Um, you know, we've been part of organizations that have a phenomenal culture, but there were so many points of culture that you, you really had to be a genius to remember all of them. Yeah, so, like, what, yeah. what are those top few values that are so important to you that, you know, because we, we human beings have a hard time remembering more than three. So, right. even if you have a number of points of culture, what are those top three that you really want to instill again and again and again? So take uh, Scott Fisher Enterprises yep. as an example. He's got the RCA. He's got, he's got three points of culture. Uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast where we interviewed Scott Fisher from Scott Fisher Enterprises, that's a great one on this topic to, to look at um, or listen to. But, okay, so how do you keep it alive? We're going to give a couple different examples. First, one of the things that, that we actually did in our company um, for years was a really great strategy. We made it a part of our weekly meeting. So we had one weekly meeting that was an operational meeting where we actually were checking in on action plans and results and reviewing KPIs and resetting for the following week. And every single week at that meeting, we opened the meeting with our culture. And the way that we did that is we had this little award. Let's pretend this is our award. It was actually a, a cute uh, action figure that we used. And let's pretend that I had the award from last week because I had demonstrated a point of culture. What I would have to do then is we would sit down at the company meeting um, the week prior, all week long, I was watching my various team members to look for who stood out as really exemplifying one of our points of culture. So I would say, Paul, I'm going to give you this 
action figure because you exemplified communication this past uh, week. And here's how Paul did it. And I would actually tell the story about how I saw Paul working with one of our clients who was having a challenge and the way that he communicated by listening and asking questions. And, and I took our point of culture and I married it with an actual real life story. And I think this is what's really critical is points of culture can really seem theoretical at times, right? They can great, seem great sort point. of like, yep. ooh, integrity. Well, what does that actually mean, right? Communication, what does it mean? So actually making the definition um, well, that, and it makes it come alive as well. It so, does, so with it's the one, yeah, it's one thing to, to to be theoretical, but it's the other thing to actually bring it to life. But it's I I loved, and it's really funny because I forgot that we used to do that, you did. and that was that was such a great way to bring culture alive. Because a lot of people, a lot of companies believe that um, that a culture is just like having a foos a foosball table in the middle of their break room or whatever, yeah. or you know we have special lunches or we have you know like a party or something. Jeans like on that. Friday, right, 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 yeah. And it can make it, and it does, certainly makes it you know more you know comfortable for people to do. But but when you are asking somebody to you know look back on the week to figure out who was you know displaying the the culture that we want to represent you know, within our company. Yeah, that was really cool. So, it, and another reason it was cool is whoever had the prize yes. for the week all week long would be looking around the team to see if they could catch someone doing something right. And and what happens in reality, at least what happened for us is it was everywhere. We saw it from all of our teammates all the time. And so it was hard to even isolate. Like, so you had to look for, well, okay, what was the best example? It was example? setting the RAS, right? It was. You're totally. setting your reticular activation system to be on the lookout for someone doing something right. So what's great is it truly, truly kept our culture alive. And it helped us by going through all the different points. Because, again, at that time, we had 14 points of culture. Yeah. Um, so it, it helped us by every week bringing one up, bringing it up, bringing it up. So we actually did get so intimately familiar with that culture. And we, we as a team, brought it to life and created right. it. Um, yeah, and even though they may have not, you know, most people couldn't list the 14 points of culture off the top of their head. Yeah. They knew a couple of them because they they were either looking for that at one time or another or they were trying to display it themselves so that the person who had this this great uh, uh, prize or yeah. um, representative of the, the acting of the culture was, you know, you were showing that off so that you could receive that possibly. And what's fun is you get to then keep it on your desk. I'm looking around in our, our office right now to see if we have one of those action figures handy. I think it's down in my no, office. I think I've kept it. Um, but, you know, this is fun. It's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. It's a great way to start a meeting with acknowledging yeah, somebody else. So that, sure. that's one example. I'd like to give one other example, and that's this whole concept of using ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And you can do that either internally with your employees, which is basically creating a committee. We just met with a client last week. They have a phenomenal culture, and one of the ways that they do it is they have people in every different role throughout the organization. So it's not just one level, one position, but you know all different levels of the organization, all different branches. And, and they, they have a culture committee where they meet on a regular basis. They come up with culture ideas. They put it in their monthly newsletter. So they've got various ways that these ambassadors internally will be, you know, keeping that culture alive. Right. And then also share the story about the, the external, using the ambassadors um, for, with your clients, having your clients be your culture ambassadors. Yeah, so we have a client uh, that, you know, runs a membership site, and it's a paid-for site and has thousands and thousands of people on it. Um, but what he's done is he's asked some of the people that have been around the longest in his membership site to become an ambassador for keeping the culture within. So somebody needs, anytime that you have an online uh, membership program, especially if you're running through Facebook, you have to somehow make sure that if somebody breaks bad, that you can call that person out and remove them from you know, the membership site, so they don't, you know, they kind of don't taint they don't the culture the and poison the wall. Yeah. Exactly. So um, what they've done is they've they've asked people to do that. They're not paying them. They give them some cool perks. Yeah. And these people are like raving they, yeah, fans. Yeah, total raving fans. So it's just, I, I thought it was, an, I, like, it blew my mind. Like, I'm not, I thought you would have to pay somebody to do that. So even in a company, you could actually just 
give that as a responsibility to somebody to your and, clients yeah your members. Or clients, right? yeah. yeah yeah even so even within if you are a member of a nonprofit organization that's another opportunity is is pulling people to be in volunteer roles of leadership that really help to drive that culture yeah and it really you know the other thing too is and I know we we just talked about us having our meetings but you know you can also just have you know companies have meetings all the time and a lot of them you know are are good and some are bad but you could have one where you have those ambassadors meeting together on a monthly basis or every other week and they're just discussing you know kind of the same thing that we have maybe at the award or that they're just out there looking for it and making sure that it that it stays the culture that was defined from the beginning because if you don't if you're not policing it right. it can get away from you as Paul said it'll get away from you so you know again is your culture intentional is it unintentional if it's unintentional and it's time to regroup get a team of people together and by the way it doesn't have to be just senior leadership in fact if you're going to if you're going to revamp the culture i would ha- strongly strongly consider pulling people in from all different levels of the organization to recharge the culture that you actually want make sure that it's defined and it's defined clearly and and again our recommendation is even if you have multiple points of culture, see if there's a way to summarize it with your top three so that there are three things that people will always remember about who they need to be within your organization. And again, I think that's important to say is, you know, everyone knows what to do in their job, right? Because you have the job descriptions and you have uh, roles and responsibilities. And so people know the task that they need to do within your company, but do they know who they need to be? And, and so once you've defined what that company culture is, make sure you've got mechanisms in place to bring it to life, keep it consistent, talk about it constantly. You can't over-communicate culture. Right. Um, and, and again, this is something that makes it or breaks it. Every single one of your clients knows what your company culture is because we can feel it everywhere we go, every yeah. business that you work with. And the last point I want to make on culture is it, it's not only a great re- recruiting tool, but it also great is a recruiting. fantastic retention. Um, and not all co- cultures are, you know, these soft, cushy, like fun, you know. We've, we've been in companies where their culture is really, the culture is like you work your tail off. And that's it. That's the culture. But you know the type of people they get that show up that work there? People who just want to work. That's it. They don't want anything else. Yeah. And so you can create that culture any way you want. But once you define it and you find that it works, then to keep it in place, have meetings, invite ambassadors to be a part of it, to police it. And, and you know, for next time, I think what we should do is talk about meeting culture, yeah. which is okay. a subset but a hugely, hugely valuable tool if you don't have very specific rules of the game for the meetings that you're having, every single company, every team, every department has its own meeting culture. And the question is, do you like the meeting culture that you have? And if not, we'll talk about that next time. Hey, well, thank you for joining us for another Evolve to Win show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you know someone who could use this information, (laughs) please share it with them. If you know someone who struggles with company culture, Um, if you haven't connected with us yet, please go to heatherchristie.com and sign up for our leadership list. Have a great day. Bye.